Hello, my name is Vic, and today we'll be talking about what other possibilities there are with printed circuit boards. So, to introduce myself a little, I'm a master's student at the University of Texas, and I'm starting an analog club. This presentation is kind of here to help keep an open mind about the medium that we all work in. Some people have made it an artistry. PCVs can be a lot of things to a lot of people. For me, they gave me a way to be less frustrated when doing electronics, but to each their own. So, what is a printed circuit board? A printed circuit board is a mechanical support for electrical connections. And the way that it accomplishes that is by having traces that it can run cut out of a piece of copper. And then those traces are embedded within usually a piece of fiberglass. And then these layers can be tied together for the use of vias in order to have connections span layer to layer. Now that's all facilitated by the manufacturers. And there's quite a few of them, all with their own unique advantages such as advanced circuits in Sunstone who are local in the US so they've got really quick turnarounds to uh, some of these others like PCP Way, GL PCP, All PCB, uh, Next PCB who have really uh, aggressive pricing and then Raming and Rogers kind of have some of the latest tech out there. When I said that definition supports for electrical connections what else can you do with that mechanical nature of a board? So let's look at a computer. A computer needs a lot of connections for a lot of different pieces. The PCIe connector, and in fact, even the SLI connector on your graphics card, if you want to use a few of them, is going to be made out of the board itself. And that means that there's no additional cost. The RF connections have one less hurdle. We're able to get all that connectivity while helping support the graphics card itself. Now, graphics cards are usually heavy cards because they burn a lot of power, it's memories, they've got a lot going on here. So usually you need some extra support, but the connector is a great way to start. This trend has continued onto other parts of the computer as well. If we look at the memory, for instance, DDR4 uses the board itself again as the connector and as the sole mechanical support. So you can snap these in and the thing you're snapping together is a printed circuit board to a connector. In the last few years, you see that solid state memory has moved to this as well. So the M.2 connector is yet another connector made out of the etching in a printed circuit board. You have an additional mechanical connection here with the screw at the end, which seems like an interesting choice looking at the RAM with its complete mechanical and electrical connection until you realize that a lot of boards end up putting this connector on the back of the motherboard with no additional clearance for said connector. The next issue that we can solve with a PCB is thermals. So what are thermals? Well, if your chip burns a certain amount of energy on your board, then that energy has to go somewhere. And so it usually turns into heat. What we want to do is we want to get that energy away from the chip and have the chip be at pretty much as close to ambient temperature as possible. And the way of getting to ambient is what's called thermal resistance. So how much temperature rises there in order to move a certain amount of energy. If the IC is burning 25 milliwatts of power, then it works just like regular resistance, but for power instead of current. A watt of power going through 10 ohms of thermal resistance will raise the temperature of the IC from ambient by 10 degrees. The temperature we care about most is the temperature at the IC itself, which is what we call TJ. Then there's the temperature of the case, so the package that the IC is in. That's TC. And then you have the other thermals, the board, and so on to get to the ambient. Looking at another IC picture, a lot of times you'll see these thermal pads underneath, which make a good thermal connection, so low resistance from the case to the board. But the issue becomes that board to ambient thermal resistance can still be very high. So how do we reduce that thermal to ambient solution? If you were going to put a heat sink on top of the IC, what that would be is making a low thermal resistance between the top of the case and ambient. But then the rest of the board is not doing very much work. So what we can do is we can actually make a heat sink out of vias by putting vias directly on that thermal pad 
we're able to give the heat another avenue to escape that junction. And this significantly lowers the thermal resistance going from the case to the outside world. So the last mechanical thing I want to talk about that we can do with a PCB is the selector. So a very common thing for all of us with multimeters is that we turn that knob and it changes how the multimeter works, right? So that is done by this layout here. As the knob is turning, a different set of electrical connections are made. And those are facilitated by the springs inside the wheel itself, which allow you to make different connections based off of the angle. If you enjoyed this talk, I would really recommend this channel. Carl does a lot of work making robots and actuators out of PCBs, and even has a fire starter over here that was interesting to me. All right, well, thank you so much. Take care.